Okay, moving on. All right, here we go. Warrior. <laughs> All right. Warrior, last class before the. All right, so we're going to charge into this. Wink, wink. Let's get it. Uh, so, first card coming up. I'm sorry, my computer froze a little bit. As I said, we're going to charge into it. Figures. Maybe it's been on too long. <laughs> Apologies. So, Warrior spell. Two mana. It's called Bulk Up. Give a random taunt minion in your hand, plus one, plus one, and then you get to copy it. For me, the applications are simple. I'm looking to hit Armadillo or Zeliax. What do you think, Nate? Sorry, yeah, it seems okay. I mean, I give it a two. I think, um, uh, you know, I Taunt Warrior hasn't been a thing in a long time. I remember Reno Jackson. Like, it's gotten a little bit of support over the years. Every year, there's a couple more support cards. I like that... The, um, I would have given this a one, but the thing that I liked about it was that it says, um, give a, you know, you also get a copy of it. And so you're generating an additional card. So, I mean, I will try it. We'll see it. I, I think the archetype is kind of fringe. So I'll give it a two. Sorry, Mike, what was your score? Oh, I, <laughs> I didn't even give it a score. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. So Tom Warrior is pretty, I guess it's hit or miss niche. So I, I'll give it a two. Yeah, I like hitting the Zilliacs or the Armadillo. Mm -hmm. All right, Sheep, what do you think? I mean, one? Uh, uh, I, I've yet to see like a, a Taunt Warrior that copies or hand buffs like actually be like actively played and not just like in a in a Cholden video. So I'm, I'm going to go one. I, I hope I'm wrong, but yeah. yeah fair enough. What do you think, Hydra? Uh, I'm going to say two just for clowns, I guess. So you can have copies, extra copies of clowns. Hmm. Sure. But other than that, uh, I don't know. It's, it seems to be super fringe, so fits under two fringe for me. For sure. All right. Next up, um, here we go. I'm, I'm liking this archetype here. It's going to be pretty cool. We have yeah. a four mana minion, two attack, six health, called Whirling Combatant. It has Battle Cry and Frenzy. It deals one damage to all other minions. This, I think, um, so there's a. A, uh, I don't know if it's standard or wild. I think it started in standard, but I've used it for a while. Little uh, risky skipper package. You know, armor smith. Um, got the acolyte of pain. Um, what's the one mana guy? Gate armor is a one three. So I feel like this card can fit into a skipper package. I do like it. The second application where you can resummon it off of the legendary that's, that's going to be coming up. Um, Overlord. Uh, this this just feels like a, a really solid card to me. So. I'm going to give it a three. What do you think, Nate? Yeah, I... I struggle with this a little bit because I see potential here. Like, I've seen the, you know, all this kind of crazy stuff with Risky Skipper and Acolyte of Pain and drawing cards. And I've... I, I, I really am not very good at playing it, so I struggle with it. Like, I see potential here, but I'm not sure how to use it. Um... I'm going to give it a two, but I think it's probably worth more than that. I just, uh, I, it seems tricky to me, but it feels strong. I mean, because this, this deal, like your whirlwind effect is going to happen at least twice, right? Well, at least once, I guess, but probably twice. Right. So there's potential. Uh, yeah. What do you think sheep? Yeah, I, I agree with you on the two. Um, it, it's a, Powerful effect when used in conjunction with other cards, but at four mana, it's kind of hard to weave in um, with those other things that you want to use it in conjunction with. Uh, you know, like Acolyte of Pain is three mana. Uh, Armorsmith is two. Um, Risky Skipper is easier to, to get off. Um, uh, Armorsmith is, you know, again, two. Um, the mech one that you're talking about, Mike, is, is one. So again, that's kind of an easier one to, to do too. Um, I see a lot of application for this, um, but I think it's mostly in standard where um, Frenzy will probably be able to see a little bit more purchase. And that's not a bad thing. Like st standard needs their archetypes and this is something that, that will help them. Um, I think it's just a little bit too expensive for us. If it had taunt, I think I'd bump it up to a three. Or if it had um, rush, dude, if it had rush, right. it'd be great. Like I'd score it higher, but no rush. Yeah. 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 So, be, so, yeah. Battle cry, Frenzy and rush. Goddamn. 
<laughs> right? <laughs> what do you think, Hydra? Well, kind of reminds me of a more expensive Ravaging Ghoul, and I can't remember the last time I seen Ravaging Ghoul, as great of a card uh, as that is. So I, I don't think we're going to see this card being played in Wild. I give it a one. Wow. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You should be. All right. Next up. Five. Oh, we got a pirate up here. Check this out. Yeah. Five mana pirate called Stone Mall Anchorman. Four attack, five health. He has Rush and Frenzy. And when the Frenzy activates, you get to draw a card. Looking at this card, um, I guess the five mana bugs me. I haven't. I play a lot of Warrior, more of the, in, I can't say Enrage. Uh, I guess you would say Frenzy. Uh, risky skipper package stuff, Galakron Warrior. Um, I guess I, I I need to like play this card a bunch to determine how I really feel about it. So for now, I just want to give it a two. I, I just feel safe giving it a two for now. Mm. What do you think? Yeah, I I I gave it a three. Um, five seems expensive, but and you know someone had said like, oh well, you don't play this in Pirate Warrior. I'm like, well, I don't know. It's expensive, right? But like f- the the rush draw card seems good now frenzy you know you can only use it once but like the stats are not that bad i like drawing cards is kind of my thought like hey immediate impact yeah. draw a card like i i like that actually and especially in an aggro deck like hey the more cards that i can draw the better so i i will try like is it probably too slow for pirate warrior probably or maybe this is like the top end, you know, but I like I like the idea of drawing cards, so I don't know. And maybe maybe Pirate Warrior is not the right place. Maybe it's somewhere else where I want to draw cards like ETC or Galakron or something like that. So you know, I I if it costs four, it'd probably be like busted, you know? And so I I do like it though. Um Yeah. Yeah, so I'm I'm right there with you um, on the three. I think that uh, this actually sees a little bit of play in Odd Warrior because you um, can drop it on five, trade it into something. It has the the pirate um, a tag to be pulled with uh, Ankar. Um, has an immediate effect, draws, and then odds are it's sticking on the board and thus is something that you can then uh, contest the board with further. So I, I think it's a solid card. Um, I don't think it's going to be like super duper meta. I don't think that the, um, you know, odd warrior is always playing this, but like, you know, that's one place that you can play it. Um, I think it's all around just solid card. What do you think, Hydra? I think three is a great number for this card. I I can't in good conscience give this a bad rating as it's five mana, four or five. It rushes. It also draws a card instantly because you're going to be trading it in a way that you're always going to draw that card unless you really need to kill something. But it's odd cost, like you pointed out. I think it's it's a good card. may not be in all meta decks. So three. Three as playable. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Next up, let's see. We have a new one mana one three called War Song Envoy. It has frenzy. Gain plus one attack for each damaged character. So I like this ability. Um this is definitely gonna make me build a second risky skipper package deck and just to play this and try it out. Like anything with three health early game at some point it's gonna die. So at no point am I going to try to, like, get this, like, really high attack early game and then try to have it live long game. One random idea I had was, like, play this into, um, what's the four mana? Whirling Combatant. And try to get um, Inner Rage and then maybe another boost. They Even though they nerfed Nitro Boost, so I can't use that card. That's what I was thinking of. But um, there's a one mana dual dual spell with Paladin. Um, I think it gives you plus three attack. And then they changed um, charge into actual charge. Mm-hmm. So that idea is long-winded. And like I said, it would be tried in casual. But I will give this card a two. Um, 
it's a one mana one three, so I guess you just play it on turn one. It's like a dire mole, right? What do you think, Nate? Yeah, I give it a two as well. I mean, it's it's good stats for the body. There's some potential, you know. I mean, I think that this whole frenzy warrior and rage warrior is more of like a standard archetype, but I think that there's some potential here. There's probably some like with charge being a card now. There's some OTK potential. Um, there will probably be an achievement that says, you know, have a war song envoy with, uh, you know, fifteen attack or something like that. Um, mm-hmm. And so there are some possibilities, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, like if you, uh, compare this to like any of the other class one mana one threes, like they're pretty solid. So yeah, I I don't see a real downside. I mean, I think it goes in a specific archetype. Like I'm not just going to dump this in every single warrior deck, but like, Mm -hmm. it's not bad. I give it a two sheep. I'm torn because a one mana one three is, you know, never actively bad, but at the same time, you only really get actively, um, you know, like good uh, synergy with this whenever you have more things on the board. So you don't necessarily want to drop this on one, but you know, if you do, I'm going to go one just because I think that there, there are other things that we want to do. Like um, the, the one mana one, three mech that, that you gain armor with that, that Mike was mentioning earlier. Um, there are things that synergize more with what you're trying to do with like the, the armor and, or the mech. Whereas this one I think is, you know, pushing that, that frenzy archetype that standard is doing. And that's not a bad thing. You know, that that's actively a good thing for them, but, but I think that we have kind of other conditions that we want to do. It's possible that we end up doing stuff with charge and stuff like that. But that's a, <laughs> like Mike was saying, that's a, an OTK to try out in, in, in casual. Um, yeah. It's not a bad thing, but yeah, for, for me, this is a one. <laughs> what do you think, Hydra? I think they've learned their lesson in creating overpowered one mana, one, three cards. So they purposely made an underpowered one mana, one, three card <laughs> I, I i i think that yeah there's some sort of meme potential with it and you can pull off combos you'll see them on trolled and, and whatnot but uh warriors doing just fine in wild without this it's a one for me all right let's see next up we have a two mana warrior spell um called conditioning it's a rank spell so it's three sets here um, the first one reads, give your minions, I'm sorry, give minions in your hand plus one, plus one. Upgrades when you have five. So the next upgrade is plus two, plus two. And then at 10 mana, it upgrades to give minions in your hand plus three, plus three. For me, this is like, I, I'll give it like a, like a two. Because maybe, no, I'll, I'll be for real. I'm going to give it a one, but I'm going to try it a couple times in casual with uh, bulk up and some Zilliax armadillo action. So it's a one. Nate? Yeah, I just I gave it a one and said that it's hand buff trash. But why is Brucon sitting on like why? Why is there a shaman mercenary on a warrior card? Just saying like doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> you see the artwork? Like, what is that? I don't even know. I I I I mean, I love the artwork. It, it's it reminds me of Star Wars, right? Like Luke's training and Yoda sitting on his back. Like, okay, um, <laughs> you know, one finger push up here, one handed push up. Like the the theme here is great. Is it Rokara and Brucon? Yeah, I think so. Like, yeah, I, yeah, I think yeah. that Rokara is the one doing the push ups. I didn't yeah, recognize her without the mohawk. Uh, yeah. But yeah, no, 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 that makes sense. I, I love the theme of it is is cool. Um, but the card itself, yeah, I don't know. I lo- like I, I have to give them props. Like the story is like emanating through the cards, and I love yeah. that. Yes. You know, I so I, I really enjoy that. Um I still think it's a trash card. So. <laughs> yes. Also, yes. <laughs> I gotta say, grimy goons are back. 
And by back, <laughs> I mean that it was an archetype that didn't work in Mean Streets, and it's not going to work now. One star card, however much I love the art and the story that it tells. <laughs> what do you think, Hydra? If I was going to run a two cost card that I wanted to uh, give plus one, plus one, I would be running Prince Keliseth. Yeah. So, and you can't run the, that with this. <laughs> so, I one cost, trash. Sorry. No, no good. <laughs> oh, well. It's interesting to think, to think about like how the Paladin one has plus three, plus three to the field, and then this has plus three, plus three to your hand. And in both mm-hmm. scenarios, it's like tricky to pull off. Just interesting. Just hit me. Uh huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so, so you get 10 mana. You've got Core Crown Elite in your hand. <laughs> You play two of these, then you inner rage it, and then you blood sworn mercenary. Hey, hey, you oh. know what? I did like that'll be a like weekly challenge, right? Set up a lethal yeah. like, hand buff lethal OTK. You know, I mean, look if you've got Corcoran elites and you've got arcane golems and you've got Leroy Jenkins and you buff them all to like each each of them has got like ten plus attack, like you could do it. It's not a good idea. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, I'll try right, it in so casual. You say try it in casual? Yeah. <laughs> ding, ding, All ding. Right. <laughs> All right. Finally, let's start rolling into some three, four star cards for me. This one a new weapon for Warrior Outrider's Axe. Four mana, three attack, three durability. Rare, rare, I'm sorry, rare, rarity. Anyway, after your hero attacks and kills a minion, draw a card. Four stars. Draw three cards. Your turn, Nate. I gave it a four as well, actually. Yeah, it's great. Uh, it's got three durability, so you can potentially, like, four mana draw three. Plus, it can go face. It can attack a minion. Like, this seems all around good. Multi-use function. Like, I, I, don't, I see zero downside to this. I like it a lot. Sheep. So whenever I think of drawing cards as warrior, I want to use um, what's it called the the two mana card that that draws something for uh, a, a every damaged minion that you or damaged character because mm-hmm. it also includes your face. Um, battle rage. Yeah, battle rage. You know, I I, I want a risky skipper. I want an armor smith. I want a um, uh, not bloodsworn mer- mercenary, but the the five drop with rush that that gets cheaper. That buddy, mm-hmm. um, you know, I want to gain a ton of armor. I want to draw a ton of cards. I want to, I want to get them. Four mana for a three-three weapon. It's not terrible. You're only drawing one a turn, but you're drawing. You know, let, let, let's say you get three draws off of it. All right. I, I, I'm just not sure exactly what I'm going to use this in, because if I'm running it in something that runs other weapons, then I. I don't want to have this for three turns, you know, if I'm going to be running like a, a wrench caliber or, you know, if it, it's a more control one, a, a gore howl that we don't, we don't really run that in control. Super warrior. collider. Super collider. There we go. Um, I can see some, some edge case scenario for this, but I think it's a little bit more for standard. Y- y- y'all's excitement has bumped me up from a one to a two. So, <laughs> so, so I'll give, I'll give outriders acts a two. I think it's, it's it, it can see some fringe play. If you can get three draws off of it, that's that's sick. But um, yeah, I'm I'm just not seeing it as as being a particularly meta card. Uh, what do you think, Hydra? I think that it's definitely a playable card. I do like that you for three turns you can basically draw two cards a turn. Your natural draw and this, it's versatile. You can go face. My only concern is what you pointed out, sheep. Do I run this alongside other? weapons like am i playing this in a control deck with super collider where i'm kind of hanging on to this and don't want to play my super collider because i'm saving that for value later am i running this in an aggro deck when i probably should just be running Ankar? so i don't know where it sits uh so i'm gonna slot it at a three because it's definitely a playable card but i don't know if it has a home in a meta deck right now all right next up we have a four mana epic warrior spell and i think this card is worth its epic rarity finally uh it's called ranker deal two damage to all minions gain two armor for each destroyed 
instantly a four. The combo card I think of is Lord Barov. Ever since they did dual oh. class and they gave Warrior the ability to have some Paladin flavor, I have rekindled my Warrior love. So this is four. What do you think, Nate? Oh, I didn't think about Barov. That's a full clear with a bunch of armor. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. 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 I wish that it didn't cost four mana. Um, yeah, no, it's cool. Um, hmm. I had rated, honestly, like I had rated it a one because I felt like there's better warrior board clears than this. Uh, but hearing you talk about it, like I'll, I'll, I'll bump it up to a two. Um, I'm not quite sure, you know, what I, what I, what I replace with, but like, that's definitely, um, you know, some potential there. Sheep, what do you think? It's going to sound weird, but I wish that this had the exact same effect, but cost five. Because I would love to play this in Odd Warrior. I would <laughs> love to play this in Odd Warrior. Like, especially with Barov, like, oh, oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At four, uh, Dead Man's Hand, you know, like you can play, play this with Dead Man's Hand and, you know, like you're, you're playing against like an Odd Paladin you pretty much just win right like uh th this definitely has a lot of possibility in play and if this costs five mana for the exact same effect i would be right there with mike and giving it a four but at four mana i, I think i have to bump it down to a three um it's a super strong effect it's a super strong card i just wish that i could rank up tank up alongside of it so so for me this one's a three <laughs> what do you think hydra i'm on three as well my only problem with this card is literally that it's an even cost card if it were any other cost like you pointed out five i'd rather pay more for it just for it to be an odd cost card i'm not looking to play a control warrior right now that's um either even or just doesn't include gen and baku at all so this is going to be three cost card for me because it does not slot into a current meta deck. Got it. There's, okay. there's a, a dead man's hand warrior uh, discord that would disagree with you on that part, though. <laughs> me me meta. I said meta. Uh oh, shots fired. <laughs> uh, so next card. Up. Um, another four from me. I'm just loving these warrior cards. Um, this set my anyway. Five mana minion. Epic, Rarity, Morshawn Elite, 4 attack, 4 health. It has Taunt and Battle Cry. If your hero attacked this turn, summon a copy of this. I gave this card a 4. I like, when I first saw it, the first thing I thought of um, was putting it in combination with Sword Eater. Sword Eater costs 4. It equips your weapon. Sword Eater's got some Taunt. People already like Sword Eater. This would summon two four fours. Kind of like when I play Secret Mage and I draw a secret for zero and I play it on turn four to get the two eight eight or the two four fours for eight. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. this card, like some other cards in other scenarios would lead to setup, but this setup when when I break it down, this setup isn't impossible or too hard for me. So I gave this card a four. I like this card very much. What do you think, Nate? I like your comparison. Um I definitely see the comparison to uh, a cult conjurer, right? But typically that's, I don't know, like you, it's so easy to proc your occult conjurer and it only costs four. And so you got eight mana worth of stats for four, where this is, seems more difficult to me. And you've got eight mana worth of stats for, f for five. Now it's got taunt. So maybe that's the reason, um, I guess it, it's, and then it sort of relies on your hero to have a weapon equipped, which is, uh, just seems a little trickier for me to pull off. I mean, I like the idea of it. Um, I just, I, I don't know. My notes here says it is difficult to proc. Seems like a worse occult conjurer. Like I gave it a two and I know I'm being skeptical on all of these. Like I want to like, it. like I see the potential here and I see like when this drops on the field, I'm going to go like, oh, no, my day is ruined. Like, <laughs> I, you know, hey, yay, yeah, to two four fours with taunt. Um, that's going to be difficult to deal with. 
I, I just feel like the setup is a little bit involved. Um, I don't play a whole lot of warrior, so I, I don't consider myself the, the expert here, but, um, you know, if, if you or someone else can make it work, like I will happily play this. Like I definitely see the potential here. Sheep. What do you think? I have a lot of thoughts about this card. It, it, it's odd, which helps, but the things that I want to do with it, kind of le like Mike was saying with the uh, the Sword Eater, Sword Eater itself costs four. Um, it seems like a, a big ask um, in order to to have attacked with, with my hero. Um, for a decent payoff, you know, additional four foreign stats, also having taunt. This is going to sound weird, but I think I would like this better as a rogue card. Oh, yeah, for sure. Right? You're always going to be attacking. Right, right. Yeah. Well, that's why, like, well, I, the I mean, secret mage, you know, it's so easy to proc, where, like, in rogue, it would be yeah. so easy to proc because you've got the natural weapon. But here, y you've got to put weapons into your deck or cards that give you weapons, and then you got to draw them, and then you got to play them. And so the setup is hard, right? Yeah, and, and you can only run a finite number of weapons. I guess you can also run uh, the Horde Pillager to get them back. Um, you know, so if you're doing, like, Bomb Warrior shenanigans, uh, um, but I, I don't think that's going to be super-duper meta. Um, I think it'll be fun. I think it'll be powerful when it happens. Um, so I'm, I'm going to go three on this one because I think it's got possibility, particularly with Bomb Warrior. You know, Bomb Warrior with Rich Calibers, with Horde Pillager. Um, you're probably not running uh, the, the Sword Eater in that one. But, like, I can see I can see some sort of playability with both um, the, the Sword Eater and in Bomb Warrior in particular. It's not a bad card in and of itself. It's just, it seems like a big ask in order to, to actually get the value off of it in a if you don't get the value, like if you don't get the battle cry, I think you're kind of underwhelmed by a five mana four four with taunt. Um, it's just, I, I want to like this card so much more than I do. And I just yeah, same. don't. So yeah, unfortunately, like it's because I want to like it so much that I think I'm going with a three instead of a two. <laughs> what do you think, Hydra? I don't think it's, this is just my opinion. I don't think it's as hard to have go off as you guys are saying because, like, for example, the Occult Conjurer, you need to have the secret up, right? And sometimes you don't have the secret up, and that's a bummer. But, like, the secret can get procced, and then it's gone. This, like, your weapon is usually around for more than one turn, right? Unless somebody oozes it or... Or whatever so like you can have a weapon with multiple durability that you've equipped a few turns earlier so i don't see it as that hard to be proccing at the same time i don't think this is going in any meta deck right so while i think it's a fine card it i don't know where this goes at all and i don't think it's just going to slot into some random deck so i'm going to give it a two so i i think in particular that more sean elite combos really, really nicely with Outrider's Axe in Standard. I, I think that's where that's really going to shine is in Standard with those two in particular. That's going to be really strong. Watch out for the players that run this, and then they also run um, Bulk Up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Just saying. Just yeah. saying. So, uh, so next up, uh, we got Legendary, right? Yep, yep. Let's see. All right, so... Three mana Rakara. Is that how you pronounce it? Rakara? Yeah. Three mana, two attack, three health. It's got a rush ability. After a friendly minion attacks and survives, give it a plus one, plus one. Instantly a four. I'm going to let you guys do the details. Go ahead, Nate. Does this, my question is, does this buff itself, does this, is this considered a friendly minion? Because it has rush. So if I play this, and then I attack with this. Will it buff itself as well, or only other minions? Because it just says I, I confidently say yes until proved, until shown differently. Because it doesn't say yeah. other, like it doesn't say other yeah. friendly minions. It says a friendly minion. So it makes me think it would buff mm -hmm. itself. Like I don't know. I'm curious. Just like yeah, just but like I, play I, in I summoning like... two different things. 
play and I summon feel like two different typically things. Typically, whenever something says a friendly min minion, it doesn't include itself, but that's just my kind of reading into it. Um, Emic says that it buffs itself. So um, mm. I, yeah, I believe if it says that friendly, my thought. that's what I believe. What it would. Yeah, if this buffs itself, it's it's much better than I was initially thinking. Yeah, so yeah. I don't know. I um, it reminds me of uh, Krastanov a little bit. You know, like rush buff, which is not bad. I don't know that it's like quite meta. I think it's it's decent. Um, I love it when there's lower cost legendaries that you know you can you can play. Uh, that have an immediate impact and do some stuff, but like this sort of goes hand in hand to me with that like hand buff type of stuff or like buffing your minions type of stuff and like I the idea is cool. I appreciate it. I still give this a two. Like and I hope that I'm wrong. I feel bad. I feel bad because Mike, you're all excited about these, and then I'm like dumping all over them, and I just don't think <laughs> well, it's that good. Hey. Um, I, I didn't make the warrior cards. The, the warlock cards. This time, so. Oh god, the warlock cards. Are... You, they made they made a bunch of. Sh oh yeah. god, at least <laughs> hey, you know what? At least paladin's good. Um, so That's yeah, true. I don't know. I, I like the flavor is so cool, and I will try it out. And I hope that it's awesome. But I I'm like, I I don't know what I would play this in. So I'm not sure. Um, there's there's some potential, you know. There's definitely some potential yeah. here. I just don't know quite what it is yet. So for me, if Rokara buffed things while they were attacking, I think that would be that like, oh, th this card is amazing. As it is, I'm just not sure where I want to play her. Right? Like Pirate Warrior doesn't really, you know, yeah, like things go in face, then automatically get buffed and your board gets buffier and that's cool. That's good. That's great. But what do I want to cut from pirate warrior mm -hmm. to oh. include a non pirate that I can only run one. Oh, yeah. I'm just, no. I'm just not sure. Um, I think she's strong in a vacuum. I'm just not sure where I want to like what I want to cut. That would be meta to include her. I think she's really cool. I think the flavor is awesome. I think Standard's going to have a field day mm -hmm. with her in particular. Um, you made a I good, definitely think... Huh? I was just going to say, you made a really good point that when you really look at it, it says a friendly minion has to attack and survive, and then it gets the buff. And right. so if we look at this, right? I mean, it's cool because it can attack a minion, it can attack FaZe, uh, and then it gets the buff. It feels a little win more to me. Like, okay. Yeah. Like, okay. If, if it, if it said that, say you compare it to like battlegrounds, right? There's those ones that like, Hey, when your pirate attacks, it gets plus whatever, plus whatever before right. the attack goes through, dude, if it was like that, Oh, hands down. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. I'd be playing this period, <laughs> but, but this is a, you know, it gets the buff after the attack goes through. So you get the benefit the following turn, assuming it survives. Which which does so. make things stickier, which is kind of nice. It does. Um, yeah. But I'm just not sure what I want to cut to play her in anything that's meta. So that automatically takes it out of out of a four territory for me. I, I think I have to go too. And I, I, I hate that because I love the flavor of the card. I love the effect. It's super powerful, but I'm just not sure where I would kind of put her. And since they have to attack and survive they have to be things that are already on board so it's kind of a little bit more win more so i'm i'm gonna go two but it's a really 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 strong two it's like almost three um and it's just because it's a little bit win more that it's two for me uh wh what do you think hydra my problem with this card isn't the card it's the format that we're gonna try to play it in where yeah. board centric decks don't really work very well in wild so if we're playing this and we're this seems to be like a mid rangey type card, we're not playing decks like that. And the effect doesn't happen till after they've attacked. And say you buff three or four things that you manage to get on board, board clear the next turn. Reset. Right? Yeah. 
it's just unfortunate because I do think that it's a good card and I think it's really neat, but I don't think that the wild meta allows for you to play this card and get away with it. So it's going to have to go down to a two just because I don't, I don't think that we can play it in any viable deck. Yeah. I, two. I can't wait to play it in, in standard. Oh yeah. Right. <laughs> Standard's going to love it. All right. All right. <laughs> Last legendary. This one's epic. I can't wait to play That's this freaking legendary. card. <laughs> Seven mana, five attack, four health. Overlord Sarfang. Sourfang. Doesn't matter. When you see him, you'll be sour. Battle cry. <laughs> Resurrect. Two friendly minion two friendly frenzy minions. And then deal one damage to all other minions. That's not this minion. So when Overlord resurrects your two Frenzy minions, those two Frenzy minions will be hit by his ability, activating their Frenzy. Yeah. So I'm looking toward uh, a new archetype and a new build. I typically, when we do our podcasts and our recordings, um, I typically won't read chat or feedback on chat because it just kind of like, you know, will muddy what I'm thinking. But I do want to bring up a conversation from discord with Smoopy daddy or somebody when they asked like how would you use this deck or what's the applications and i said i wait for the show so i can't wait to play some curve stone i see people saying like what deck does this card go in why would you use it but it's like the more cards they produce over time eventually like you we have no choice but to make new decks like there's so much new stuff coming in can't keep playing the old stuff mixed in with they're gonna nerf stuff so curve frenzy right rolling combatant this is a neutral card. Turn five, you drop down your Baron's Blacksmith. Turn six, your Tarajo Brave. And then turn seven, or Overlord Sourfang. Like, it's going to be insane. There's so many, like, there's so much high health on these on these uh, minions I just named. Like, getting them on curve is going to be epic. And I, I just can't wait. I'm so excited for this card. Um, Snoopy asked, asked me what my two targets specifically were. So I'm looking to target Baron's Blacksmith. And Tarajo Brave. One is a five mana, one is a six mana. One is epic, one is rare. You can play two copies of each. I got four in my deck. I'm not worried about finding them or drawing them. My top end is at seven. Like I'm I'm so excited for this card. Yo, Nate, what do you think about the Overlord, man? Uh yeah, I I, I like this card. I'm not as quite as hyped up about it as you are, but I think that it's it feels strong to me. Um I think I underscored it. Like I gave it a three. Honestly, it's probably stronger than that, but it's a build around and I'm not quite sure what that build around is. I think, I mean, you had just talked about it, so that, that makes sense. I think I love the flavor of it. Okay. So I'm, we'll, we'll talk about it more next week, but like, okay, hold on, check this out. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm pulling this off of my shelf here. All right. What is it? This is the man himself right here. Uh, here, here he is, the Overlord Sour Fang. Oh, oh so cool! Yeah, yeah. The, the statue here. Yeah, and oh. and in his hand, he is holding the uh, Arcanite Reaper, which is this this uh, giant axe here. Um, and That's so metal. it's okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some. There's definitely some lore with this guy. It's super cool. Um, and so, yeah, I the the effect it seems really strong. Um, I not quite sure, you know, how to play it. Like, hey, but it, it, I love resurrect stuff. I love that. You know, when I first read this, I was like, eh, and then I reread it and kind of dissected it, and like you guys were saying, hey, this is actually pretty cool. Where it's going to trigger the frenzy effects. Like as soon as you play this guy. And so you're going to have yeah. these, uh, it'd be one thing if it just resurrected the, the minions, but then that it triggers them also like, Oh, Whoa. Yeah. And deals one damage AOE to your opponent's board too. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I, it creates a new archetype, I think. And so that's where I struggle with like, yeah, in standard, it's I would give it a, out of nowhere. In standard, I'd give it a four for sure. In in wild, like I'll give it a three for now. I think it's definitely playable. We'll see. Hey, Mike, what was your score on this? Was it a four for you? 
Oh, I'm sorry, four, definitely, yeah. Okay. Especially because of Baron's Blacksmith with the plus two, plus two. Yeah, it's there's, a four. Yeah, yeah, there's potential here. I, I'm excited to play it. I like this guy. Uh, Sheep, what do you think? Yeah, um, so the fact that we don't have any other frenzied minions outside of the set is both a bane and a boon, right? Like uh, the the amount of things that this can hit are restricted, but that's that's both a good and a bad thing because we can make sure that we get effects that are really strong that we really like. That's that's both that that's good. You you want that to happen, right? The downside is what if I don't have my Baron's backsmith or or my um oh what's the six mana one called the that you're talking Tarajo about? Brave. Yeah, yeah, the Tarajo Brave. Like those effects are super powerful and super awesome. And if I can curve stone five into six into seven, whether the, those dudes um, frenzy effect goes off whenever that they, they originally are summoned, they're definitely going off with sour fang. That's going to be sick. That's going to be awesome. Yeah. I'm not sure exactly how consistent that's going to be. Cause I can only run two of the blacksmith and two of, of the brave in my deck. Right. And, and I think that Mike, you're completely right. I want to limit my, uh, uh, frenzy minions to those really powerful effects Mm -hmm. completely for this yeah so with the lack of consistency i think i'm gonna have to go with three but it's a super strong three because the effects are going to be super strong as well um if this was standard i'd be going like four or five easy peasy lemon squeezy uh (laughs) because you know they, they they don't have those other um you know kind of like super strong archetypes and so the the uh, lack of consistency there is okay. You know, you you can run a few more of the the diluted frenzied effects, whereas we're kind of wanting to keep those into those really really strong things, uh, so that we can have those super strong like swing turns. So um, for me, it's a three. It's a strong three, but it's a three. What do you think, Hydra? Yeah, I think it's more of a standard card. I love Mike's optimism, and I want this to, to work in Wild. And I think that's going to be really, really cool if it does, and I'm definitely going to try it. I can't call it a 4 for being uh, slotting into a meta deck, as that doesn't exist, so it has to create its own archetype. So I'm going to give this a 3 because it's super cool, and I love how powerful it is. And... I, it's hard to call stuff inconsistent when, if you think about it, we have these payoff cards that we've been playing for years, right? Like, you can call Nazoth inconsistent because oh, it's 10 mana and you may have not drawn the other cards. Like, that's just how it works. You have to build up to things, right? So, right. it's like, it's how it works. It's you play, you have these big payoff cards like Yogg. You play Yogg when you've played all your spells, right? You play Cthun when you've played all your Cthun buffing things. It's just something else that you play after you've played all the other things. So I think it's really cool. I don't know if it's going to be a meta card, but I think it's awesome. So I'm giving it a three. Awesome. Excellent. All, all right. right. And that uh, wraps it up for Warrior, right? Yes, mm-hmm. it does. All right. <laughs> 